So there is that balance between gradual and instant manifestation. You always instantly manifest the next frame, but from the story subjective logical point of view, you're going to make that seemingly gradual. I'm not saying you're not going to accelerate this. You're going to accelerate this to a great extent, to where you feel less and less and less limited and more and more like it is a dream. But what is so unique and beautiful about this particular timing is that you learn how to gradually increase the acceleration of your changing from one parallel reality to another in a very conscious fashion. This is interesting. I'm not saying take your cue from what appears and what your parents have told you the way that things appear right now should mean to you and how you should feel about that. Completely always empower yourself to feel about what you see in a completely new way. It's up to you. Is your mother dying? Absolutely awesome. Have a party. Be happy. Or not, up to you. Just because your parents told you that that's a really sad event, and just because everyone's wearing black. I love black, by the way. Doesn't mean that you cannot show up being happy. Of course, there's this thing called respect and integrity. You know, you can honor that a little bit. A little bit. You cannot too rapidly expand other people's worlds, but inside, you can be happy. And to an extent to the outside, you can start to, with wisdom, overflow that peaceful confidence that everything is all right into those around you at that funeral. And maybe even wear a party hat, depending on what your family is like and whether they tend to bring their shotguns to funerals. (laughs) But it is entirely up to you how you feel, how you perceive any given circumstantial moment. There is nothing set in stone, nothing inherently transmits a state of being into you. It's all subjectively self-generated, self-defined. And there is nothing in creation that suggests that one particular experience should be experienced in a certain way. Nothing in creation that suggests, except for our law book and, you know, human brains and the collective consciousness and all the morals that we've agreed on and the traditions and the lineages and all that bullshit, Aside from that nonsense that is man-made, there is nothing inherent in the structure of creation that suggests that a particular configuration of molecules should mean you feel bad. Whatsoever, there is not a single configuration of molecules that inherently structurally suggests that you should feel a certain way about it. In other words, all the timeless infinite creations of this universe are neutral and without meaning. You are there to tell the tale. You are there to generate the story. And how free you are in being able to generate that story for yourself according to your own highest intuition and desires will determine what configuration of the universe will fall into your slide next to show you the reflection of your chosen state of being. And in this way, you can very consciously and with no ego, just because you are a desire is being, just because you are an aligned being, just because you are a passionate expression of creation, wanting to tell as many tales as you can in as beautiful and epic a way as you can, because that is what expands upon the universe. Nothing else will. Only you can expand upon this universe. Nothing else will. So it is your duty, your job, your honor, your desire to be of service to the Creator by telling an epic tale. I'm not saying everyone should become an action hero or a spiritual teacher or a famous rock star. Epic can look like anything. The most epic reality is if it's in alignment with who you feel you truly are, free from blockages and negative definitions picked up along the way, realizing that you can clear out all these negative definitions, and this is what empowerment and acceleration is, and apply and paste your own new definitions, subjective perspectives, onto every single inherently neutral and meaningless configuration of molecules. I'd love to see someone quote me on that sentence. Circumstances do not create your state of being. It's the other way around. This is the bottom line of the empowerment teaching. When you get that, you become more and more non-physically connected and in tune with yourself. You come from a non-physical focus, and yes, you notice the physical focus, but it's just the tail end of your expression of who you are. It's no longer the dominating factor indicating and giving cues to how you should feel, what you should do, who you should respond to. You are now God. You are now creator, co-creator. You are now as you are created to be. 
in the image of the Creator. The image of the Creator is not the created. The image of the Creator is another Creator, because that's its exact image. The created is its opposite. If you are created in the image of your Creator, that does not mean you're the opposite. It means you're created in the image of your Creator, which means your Creator. Right? So you are a creator. You can't help creating. You can only make it so unconscious that it seems like everything is happening for you. And then you get these really, really boring spiritual teacher, teachings sorry, that talk about there is no free will. Yes, but who do you think is doing it? You're the receiver of your experiences only because you are also the giver of your experiences. So that grace that you surrender to from its own point of view is your higher you. And the more you separate yourself from that which is creating your experiences, the more you feel victimized and separate and like there is no free will, which is the antichrist, is the anti-thought, it does not exist. No free will does not exist. Everything contains free will. The more you give that story of I'm separate from my creator, even if you call it innocence, even if you call it egolessness, it is still a fallacy. It's still an ignorant perspective of creation. It's still not true. You're still separating your vibratory state from that of your higher true self, which is creating everything you see right here, right now. If you want to get closer to that true love, that true wisdom, that true connection, that true humility, that true selflessness, you need to become more as the Creator is. You cannot become more like in vibration by separating yourself from that which creates all that is. You have to become more like it. Always honor your integrity, always honor the integrity of other people's free will, other beings' free will. Of course, live with as much compassion and kindness and love and generosity as you can. Those are not mutually exclusive. In fact, this becomes more natural as you learn that there is no lack of your creative abilities. And so you feel overflowing with empowerment and confidence because you know that you're in control of your reality all the time on some level. The more you download this knowing, the more you liken your frequency onto the frequency of the creator of your higher self. And the more you'll be endowed with the selflessness that are natural qualities of that higher state of consciousness. You can't be selfless by pretending to be, by trying to be. Selflessness is a natural expression of you getting closer in your frequency to who you truly are. Who are you? Are you the victim? Is God the victim? Is your higher self the victim? No. So stop playing victim. Unless you want to be self selfish and insistent and arrogant, even in your humility. Oh, I know nothing. 